Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. Today I've got a double opening with a couple of stories. Um, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is, is um, open up this package, and I'm not sure which knife I should use here. Um, try this guy. And here it is, kind of smashed open already, I guess. <laughs> what this is, it's a ZT knife. And uh, I ordered this on Amazon and it was used. I mean, I bought it knowing it was used. It said it was used. In fact, it's got a sticker over the top of the original sticker. So I guess uh, having the box kind of in this shape doesn't surprise me. Um, instructions, box, good enough. Um, but anyway, this is the little thing. Hopefully it's in good shape. Um, and what this is, is a tiny little ZT pocket knife. Um, it has a clip, which I wanted. It's got titanium uh, on, on the clip side here and carbon fiber on the other side. Um, it's a flipper, so it opens, but it's incredibly small. Now, the reason I, I got it used is because the retail on this is 250, but it sells for about 200 bucks all over the place online. Came about came out about two years ago, and it's zero tolerances or ZT's smallest knife. And I, frankly, I'm not a big fan of ZT knives because of their blade styles. They often have kind of a reverse curve, which is really hard to sharpen, and I find doesn't get used all that much. Um, but anyway, the reason I was struggling, kind of as a joke, is I have these two knives. This one is titanium. It's a titanium frame lock flipper. You know, so super light, pops it open. This one here is a carbon fiber axis lock bench made. Um, and I like both of these. This one is very thin, light. This one is stout, um, great blade steel. Now ZT for the longest time was using an LMAX steel as kind of their, their popular house steel. Um, but they've changed this up. Um, this uses a 20 CV steel, which is a way better choice for a knife like this. Um, I probably wouldn't have got it if it was LMAX. Um, oh, by the way, the spacer or the, the, the pivot washer here is titanium and the spacer in the back here is titanium carries a tip down which is a must because anything that's carrying the other way is is not all that functional i don't think if you have to reverse you know the knife comes out of your pocket this way and can immediately be deployed um, but if it comes out tip up or um, tip down then you have to reverse it in order to open it but anyway um, really light this thing is like 1.7 ounces tiny tiny blade now why that's okay is because we often don't use most of our blade we use the tip of our blade that's where almost all of the work is done so this thing is is twice as big as this giant utility knife that i use for everything and another way to kind of look at it is i've got some blades here that have coatings on them but where do you see the wear pattern you know that tip just gets used constantly for all kinds of things so you can see this is you know uh an actual document if you will of the work that the tips of knives go through and even on this little super thin pocket one you can see that's where the wear is starting to occur so what I got here basically is just, I didn't get a whole blade, I got the tip, which is um, where almost all of the work gets done almost all of the time with a knife. So anyway, and I also, I've carried this guy a lot. This is a tiny little spider co, so I'm actually going up in size. Um, and this little thing has gone with me all over the world. It's amazing, um, this, this little knife, but um, I wanted something, you know, a little more daily carry. I, I fell in love with these finger grooves on this one um, because even though it's a fairly small knife, it just does add a lot. Um, this ramp system here with the flipper lever um, really gives it a solid purchase. The jimping at the top um, is important versus the smooth. But anyway, so where am I going with that? I'm going over here to this package. So I had to unlock the, the key here for the... The next one, Zorro tool. And what do I have here? I have got a 
A 6AA G2. What is that? That is this. I guess there's a little hole. Um, it's this guy right here. What it is is a Vera holding function nine or Torx nine. Um, and why would I want that? Well, the reason I want it is because it's not in here. And when I got this set, I knew that, and I put in an order for this one. So I'll probably pop out maybe this pry bar and then insert this guy in here, except I'm going to move them around. So that gives me the set. Now I've used this a little bit and I have a couple of thoughts. One is it's a great presentation. It's so easy. And once you kind of learn where things are and what they look like, um, it's very fast to get the uh, driver that you want. Um, uh, the um, slotted screwdrivers, I think, are a little bit overrepresented here because I've got uh, slotted, 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 slotted. So, like, if I take these two out, you can see there's a slight difference here, um, but there's not a huge difference. Um, you know, so is there, is there another driver that's missing that could have been replaced by one of these long slots? Um, as far as the Torxes now, they're set. Um, I haven't used these yet, um, uh, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to run into that'll take those. Uh, but those um, were hand chosen, I guess, for this kit for some reason. Um, and then it does have, for sure, this one right here. Um, which is critical. This is the, the pentalobe, which is the screw that you have to, or the driver that you have to have in order to get these little tiny screws out of um, iPhones. And so I'm glad that they included that one because it's critical. Um, I would have had to have ordered one if they didn't. Um, in fact, it's so common. Maybe two of them would be nice. But anyway, um, the presentation, the roll-up, I like. One thing I noticed is this is the sticky Velcro down here. Um, and this does get covered with stuff. I've had to clean it a few times because you set it down on your workspace. And basically, it's grabbing all the stuff. Um, and it rolls up and fits nicely, so it's not like it. you have to you know, spend much effort squishing it. So let's take a look at the handles here. Um, I've got a few other handles I'm going to set out. Actually, I've got one already out um, over here. Let's talk handles for a second. And what I've discovered, just playing around, um, if you need a way to try and figure out if your handle is, you know, if it's a good one or not, um, you need your hand, drop it in, and then go to the most common way that you would hold it and see where your your index finger and your thumb line up for precision. That's precision in turning and precision in placement. Um, some like this, this is huge. This is a really tiny, like a T3 or something, way small with a giant handle. And I found this one a little hard to place. It's too big. Um, and it's got this giant rubber area. You will hit it, uh, but it's also big enough that you're gonna end up um, you know, stumbling over it, I find. Um, the clines, when I do that, this I, shaft I find a little long, but it's okay. I'm missing it. I'm dropping my fingers down here. This is not much. This acetate end um, is kind of slippery, but it'd, it'd be nice if I had the little bit of rubber right there to be able to grab, because otherwise I have to kind of squish my fingers up a little to get into the, the purchase area on it. Um, Here's the Vera. Um, and this particular one, I guess I must have pulled it out right there. Uh, there's a 50-50 as far as, as texture, being able to grab it. Um, plenty good. In fact, one of the things that you can do here is you could easily overdrive this because it's so grippy that, you know, usually you spin them in until it stops. And, and the way you tell is your hand slides. That's, how, that's like the torxing of it. The driver stops, your, your fingers keep spinning. Um, whereas if you have too much grip, it's gonna be easy for you to, to add that little extra bit that might be too much. 
The, um, the end caps need to spin freely, not provide really, I don't think, any resistance. Klein has a little. Um, but what I'd like is the, uh, um, the resistance to be a non-issue. So I know that I'm feeling the driver and not, not any resistance here. The standard instinct handles, those are great for larger things. They're not, not a micro screwdriver at all. Um, and then the old days, the old little Craftsman micros, uh, these were, to me, worthless. Way too small. They're like, they, they, you know, took their regular screwdrivers and threw them in the dryer, and then they came out small. Well, my hand is the same size, so this doesn't help. It's just cute. Um, so you really have to scale things down in terms of the rotation and in terms of the length. Um, so anyway, I'm, uh, I'm thrilled with this guy here, this setup, and um, I feel um, like it now is, is balanced. Once I got that T9 in it, I can sleep at night now, and I'm ready to go to work. So with that, Doc out.